Hi, I'm Jen. I got my COVID booster yesterday and that's why I look like this. Quick reminder here at the top that this is an inclusive space where Black Lives Matter and we are anti-Asian hate. That means you are safe here in the video with me and in the comments below where no hate speech of any kind will be tolerated. Please let us know if there's anything we can do to make our content more accessible or inclusive by dropping a comment down below or you can send me an email. Are you always this articulate? Hercules. My, my name is Hercules. Today I would like to talk about the starving artist myth and Jonathan Larson and Tick Tick Boom. I'm going to start this with a disclaimer. I had a previous life as a giant theater nerd and I guess not really previous. I'm still a giant theater nerd. But I did get my master's degree in theater studies, so I don't get to use this knowledge very often, but when I do, I get very excited about it. All right, we're going to start with who is Jonathan Larson. Jonathan Larson wrote Rent. He was a musical theater guy. He lived and worked in New York City. He talked a lot about being a starving artist in the 90s. That was kind of his jam. And he was a huge fan of Stephen Sondheim. He also played the tuba in his high school marching band, like someone else I know. There's like a lot of things to unpack about him, but that's really kind of the, the cliff notes that you need to know in order to understand the story of Tick, Tick, Boom. He's in New York. He's trying to write like the great American musical. He's obsessed with Stephen Sondheim. He spends eight years writing this show called Superbia, which he uh, did write and put on in a workshop setting and it did not do well. It never got picked up. And that led to him writing Tick, Tick, Boom and then eventually Rent. And those two obviously did go on to have a lot more success. Jonathan Larson talks a lot about the life of an artist, but he also talks a lot about the AIDS epidemic as it was sweeping through New York in the 80s and 90s. It was killing people left and right and the government and the people in power who could have done something ignored it and took steps actually to perpetuate it instead of helping the communities that were being most affected because they were primarily drug users and homosexual men. The reason that I'm talking about this right now is a, because the musical just came out on Netflix or the movie just came out on Netflix. It was spectacular. I mean, really, really good. It was going to be very hard to make me not like that movie because I love that musical. But I also want to talk about some of the editing that Lin-Manuel Miranda did to the story uh, that I think is good. I don't really know how to give him enough credit for what he did, but I'm going to try. It is not a direct adaptation of the musical. It's like a biopic musical autobiography that Jonathan Larson wrote while he was working on Rent. But the problem with an autobiography is that you are writing it from your own perspective, right? So you can only see things from your point of view. You don't see the way that you're affecting other people. You're naturally going to glorify yourself a bit. You're going to build yourself up and justify all the actions that you took. The difference between Tick, Tick, Boom, the play, and Tick, Tick, Boom, the movie is that Lin-Manuel Miranda is not Jonathan Larson. So he could look at that story with a bit more of an objective lens. He can look at it with the advantage of time on his side, and he can back up a little bit and see how the actions of Jonathan affected his friends and family. Yes, he stuck to his guns and he did his art, but he also really hurt the people around him in the name of that. And that was not always the best way to get to where he was. There were a few lines that I really loved that I don't remember being in the show about writing after he finishes his production of Superbia. He talks to his agent and his agent is like, nobody bought it, but like your job is to sit down and write another musical. And then when you're done, write another musical and keep writing and writing and writing. And that's what you signed up for. Like that's what I signed up for. And it's not, it's not fast. It's not overnight. Anyone who looks like an overnight sensation has years and years and years of hard work and sweat and tears behind them. The people that are going to make good art and that are going to feel what they're producing and really stand behind their work are the people that have worked really, really hard for those successes. So some of the decisions that Lin-Manuel made in this film was to make some of the soundtrack diegetic, and that means that it is in the environment of the film. So the characters could hear it. It was on the radio or it was something someone was humming on the street. And it was some of the songs that had a little bit less to do with the plot and didn't really fit the new er narrative that he was imposing upon the film. I think that was really smart. Some of the songs are nice, but a little bit tangential and a little bit hard to understand, especially when you're adapting something that's a little offbeat for the musical theater community. For a wider audience, it is incredibly smart to make that a little more digestible. So good job, Lin-Manuel Miranda, who for sure is going to watch this and needs my praise. There was a ton of stunt casting in one particular song that takes place in the Moondance Diner, which is where Jonathan Larson worked before he quit and full-time went into playwriting. So there's my tiny, tiny, tiny class on Jonathan Larson. Why am I talking about this during NaNoWriMo? Well, I will tell you. 
When I was younger, I found the soundtrack of Rent. I have always been this way. I've always hyper fixated on things. And when I hyper fixated on Rent, I thought that my life as an artist would be a lot like Jonathan Larson's. I was going to be a person who lived in New York and just kind of did whatever I could to make my art without selling out aka having a paycheck, which is the only thing that I will give my mom credit for. Like that was probably horrifying for her to hear from me as her child, especially since Jonathan Larson, spoiler alert, ended up dying alone in his apartment the night that Rent was supposed to open. So he never even got to see his masterpiece produced and the amount of love and care and success that he had with that show. Tick Tick Boom is about imposter syndrome. It's about comparing yourself to other successful artists. It's about how Jonathan Larson knew that Stephen Sondheim had his first successful produced musical at 27 and because he was inching towards his 30th birthday thought that his entire life was over. When I was younger I had similar feelings. I thought that if I didn't have success by the time I was 30 it would be fine if I just died in my apartment alone. So cool. I watched it and it was really good timing or bad timing depending on how the next couple of days go but I think really good timing. It was a really good reminder of one of the reasons that I started on this artistic path in the first place. It's out of passion. It's out of wanting to tell stories. It's out of wanting to live this creative, beautiful artist's life and share people's lives with each other. We find ourselves in another epidemic, not nearly as widespread as the AIDS epidemic. But again, it's a situation that just feels hopeless sometimes. It feels like the immunocompromised people and people with less resources to get medicine and immunizations are the ones that are disproportionately affected by this type of situation. And like that matters and it makes it really difficult to make art and to think about making art at a time when people are dealing with much bigger struggles. My family is dealing with things that are much bigger struggles. This week I briefly considered just kind of giving up on NaNoWriMo, just not doing it, not having it in my life and not really working on writing for a while and kind of seeing how that worked out. I think I've changed my mind. I think I'm gonna try and finish NaNoWriMo in the November 15th to December 15th timeframe. I've got about 5,000 words on my manuscript. I've got one manuscript with my editor and I've got the other submitted for publication possibly. And I've also got my submission sent in for the International Conference for the Fantastic and the Arts. So I have a lot of moving pieces, but it's not like I just stop and nothing changes. But it is a slow process and I mean the parts of it that I love the most are slow. They are creative and they are sitting and thinking and editing and writing and considering like whose story am I telling? Do I have the right to tell this story? Whose stories am I consuming and learning more about? So there's there's just a lot that goes into this and I realize how privileged I am to even be in this position to have this life to give up. I'm not having the electricity turned off and like struggling to pay rent and buy food and that a lot of people are and some people have done that in the name of their art and some people don't have a choice. So yeah, I um, I feel like crap. I'm sitting around in a blanket that is also a sweatshirt and watching musicals about being 30 and feeling like a complete failure, which is not super great, but uh, I, I think maybe more productive than I expected it to be because of the perspective through which it was told. So that's kind of my NaNoWriMo week this week. It was a lot of debating with myself whether I even wanted to keep doing this and if I wasn't going to do it perfectly, whether I really wanted to keep doing it. I talked about this last week and it's like a roller coaster ride. I've been doing NaNoWriMo from the 1st to the 30th for so long that changing that parameter sounds weird to me. It sounds like giving up a little bit and there's no one putting that parameter in front of me but me. So I'm going to keep working. Hopefully I will get over these flu-like symptoms and feel better to get some work done this weekend. And I will talk about that in next week's video and see how we're doing then. So after that video about being a starving artist, that is all I have got for you guys this week. Please watch Tick Tick Boom uh, for any number of reasons, if not at the very least for all the Easter eggs and stunt casting that are in the number called Sunday that takes place in the Moondance Diner. It's very clever and very fun. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel if you enjoyed this video. You can also ring the bell up there to make sure that you are notified every time there is new content on this channel. I will be doing some live sprints this coming week. I will probably update that on Twitter, maybe Instagram. You can also get some bonus content at patreon.com slash write with a pendragon where you can find all of my deep dives into the free and digital resources that I use while I am working. I will see you guys next week, hopefully with an update on my words. That does not completely stress me out. And uh, until then, stay safe and stay healthy and have a great Thanksgiving. See you guys next time. Bye. Are you always this articulate? Hercules. My, <clears throat> my name is Hercules.